44 years ago, the federal government expropriated 18,000 acres of Class I agricultural lands for another airport. The lands remain abandoned, yes, but alive with abundant potential. They're called the Pickering Lands, and they're on the northeast border of the Greater Toronto Area. Beneath these lands, countless earthworms are still doing their work. Their earthworming aerates the soil, preparing these lands for new seeds to germinate and grow. They're change agents. On October 15, 2016, 50 urban food activists, planners, architects and growers boarded a bus in downtown Toronto. Their guides were artists, ceremonial leaders, poets and dancers, who engaged them in sacred ceremony, poetry and dance that stirred the senses and opened hearts and minds as prelude to revisioning what could be. I don't want to play favorites with the elements, but earth is my task this autumn. Sumac, rickrack, parched fields. I want to welcome you officially <laughs> for joining us today on this wonderful day. We pave our land in differences. Franchise by franchise, highways mirror each other as place dissolves and languages stop speaking. We've stopped speaking too, ears tuned to our devices. Plugged in, we can't hear the shriek of traffic or the gossip around us. Few people realize that Ontario's only permanent source of natural wealth is its farm soil. Because we've come to such a point in this time where human beings have created so much of what's wrong with Mother Earth, we have a responsibility. We have to help with the restoration. All things can be restored when you have faith. And so we're being called to action as human beings. There's libraries full of books about why we can't, we should not pave our class one growing lands at this time of climate change and really vulnerable uh, chaotic global markets and artists know how to engage people <laughs> in a heartened way. I see the body as a vessel between heaven and earth and it brings to life sensation. It allows us to experience and to feel and leave an imprint on the world on the earth we walk on. We can be a poesis, restoring humus to the soil with humor and affection. I think it is really important to engage a broader audience to consider arable land and to come together from different perspectives and different expertise to, to first connect around good food and, and understanding and move forward to consider the earth and and the future of it. Restless, unsettled, we immerse ourselves in noise while beneath the land and its aquifers, the planet's plates drift west, outmaneuvering the GPS we've come to love like our own hands. So we are all deeply individual and what we would like you to do with this person across from you is you're going to introduce yourself, but through movement. In this land of radiance, in this blazing land, this sunburnt, sundown, sunlit land, in this land within view of the city and the 407 and the 401, in this land of 40-year thoughts, we walk where we want to go to read what someone else has written on the landscape. Be the river, be its red clay trough, the polished and runnel banks which curve and hold. Be the tangle of small willows crowding the bank. Be all these and more.
We make our own myths and spells these days. Clear-cut myths of peeled bark and planed logs. Rooted myths for abandoned lands, their owners evicted and bereft. We cast new spells, tell new stories of undoing and renewing. Miracles of restorations accomplished by the heroic or the flawed. As we become collaborators and co-creators in movement, we also touch and connect to each other without even actually physically touching. In sharing this dance, we cross the bridge from being alone to being together, without and with becoming a community that's fully alive. You walking, your footprints are the road and nothing else. Wayfarer, there is no road. You make the road by walking. By walking, you make the road. Social change happens slowly as new ideas are planted in well-prepared soil. With our words and deeds, we too can become like earthworms, agents of change. <laughs>